John Wesley Shipp, Amanda Pays, Joyce Heiser, Jerry Ryan, Jason Bernard, a whole slew of others. Two-parter, two episodes of the series that were later turned into a direct two-video feature film, 1992, The Flash. Jason Bernard, excellent actor. He's been in a lot of stuff as a character actor over the years. Most of us, my generation, knew him best as Caleb Taylor, Elias's father on V in both of the V miniseries, who ended up giving his life for the cause of saving Earth. So he has a tendency to play these heroic figures, and here he is in the two-part episode of The Flash. In this episode of The Flash, or this two-parter, a villain from the past appears to have reappeared, a villain known as the Ghost from before the time of this universe's Flash, John Wesley Shipp, playing the role. The Ghost has reappeared, but with the appearance of the Ghost, an old superhero or an old vigilante hero has reappeared, the Nightshade. This time he calls himself the Deadly Nightshade, and he is deadly using lethal force where he did not in the past. The original Nightshade turns out to be played by <laughs> Jason Bernard, no longer actually serving as a hero. He has long since retired and some younger, deadlier person with more violent intent has usurped his name. Over time, we discover that Desmond Powell, the original Nightshade, has a whole background story and we receive it. This is what really makes this episode huge, why it was so good and why it's so significant today. Desmond Powell, as it turns out, was a Korean War veteran, a hero who served his country. He returned to the United States and discovered that he was living still in the same corrupt local government machine that had been dominating local politics since he had departed. It was the same corruption and the crime families and the gangsters and everybody was interconnected and he'd had enough. To top this off, this is an era where Desmond Powell happened to be black. He's a black American and is not getting listened to the way that he feels his voice should carry weight. So he becomes the Nightshade, a vigilante hero with a whole array of self-designed, non-lethal weapons, but he goes around capturing the bad guys, leaving them for the police, finding the evidence, leaving it out, exposing them, and he cleans up his city. It's important to note that this is a real historical sequence of events, by the way, you do some internet searches, you will find in the wake of World War II, there were many people returning home from the war that did drastic things, even the taking up of arms, to break the power of some of these corrupt county and municipal governments that were running the show. People who had just got done fighting fascism in Europe and were like, we, we did all of this and we come home and we, know, we still don't have a say, regardless of race, because this corrupt machine runs everything? No, no. This isn't what I stormed Normandy for and fought for every mile of Europe for. And so men, even to the point of taking up arms and holding new elections, broke the power of these old machines. The nightshade fits in nicely with real history, but the real genius is that this, this is how human beings used to look at being disadvantaged. You fought harder. You didn't sit around and scream and cry and throw temper tantrums about how you were entitled to something. You are entitled to exactly nothing in this universe just for being a biological entity. Maybe it's true, even in America, God knows, you're born to death and taxes. But taxes, as inevitable as they may seem, are not in an eternal sense inevitable. Only death is. You are born with only the guarantee that you are going to die. Governments may invent rules and regulations and things they call entitlements, but you are actually fundamentally entitled to none of it. Without you earning it, deserving it, or somebody being foolish enough to take it from others and give it to you, but you are not entitled to it even though you might get it. You have to earn it. 
Desmond Powell was a war veteran who served for his country. He came home, found that there was corruption. He sort of mentions as an aside, no one listened to him. He was still a shade or a spook. It was that era. And what did he do? He owned it. He got himself a costume. He built his own weaponry and he called himself a nightshade. And he went around cleaning up his city and being a hero. And he leaves a legacy then of heroism for the future. We find out that Flash is mesmerized by hearing the story of this hero, this guy that came before and took a stand who had no superpowers except his own indomitable, unconquerable guts. He had the cojones to stand up and he did it. And now some young punk that didn't deserve it, didn't earn it, didn't work for it, suddenly has taken up the mantle and stole the name and changed it to Deadly Nightshade, stealing away people's lives, while the American patriotic veteran, who had seen enough death and bloodshed, looked for a way to do it different, to do it better, to fix his neighborhood, to his city, to break the power of the old corrupt machine and the gangs without bloodshed, without murdering people. And so finally, Nightshade, he has to come out of retirement. He helps the Flash track down the deadly Nightshade and the ghost, and finally we can live happily ever after. There's so much great stuff in the Flash series. That first Flash series, 91, 92, it didn't last long enough. It had so much potential, the special effects of that era struggle, but you've got Mark Hamill appearing as the trickster. You just, you have these great, all that great possibilities, those possibilities that are there. Probably the finest thing that the new CW Flash did was pay tribute to that series. Having John Wesley's ship back as Flash from another universe. Having him back, and my God, before I quit watching the Arrowverse because it all went so haywire woke over the top. When I watched Crisis on Infinite Earths, the last thing they made stomachable, that was amazing that John Wesley Shipp should be the guy who gave his life to save the cosmos and has the flashbacks to Amanda Pays, that universe that we didn't see nearly enough of, and he's the guy that saves the universe. And ironically, that kind of story, that kind of writing, the sorts of things that they were doing with venerating the possibilities of the nobility of the human spirit against the worst aspects of villainy of the human spirit. That story, those things that could have made the Arrowverse great and continue to be great are the very ideals that they have flushed down the toilet. They died on the giant cosmic treadmill, treadmill tread wheel with Flash. They died with the real Flash, John Wesley Shipp, and the Arrowverse went down the way of all modern entertainment. But still out there is that good classic Flash, that good classic writing that venerates the human spirit, the American spirit, the American way of life, that shows the depths and depravity of human evil, but also the heroicness that can be in people that stand up against it. That was the good Flash that was the nightshade. That was an incredible hero who didn't piss and moan about his circumstances in life, but he went out and achieved anyway, and he didn't care at the end of the day whether you changed your mind or not. He fixed the things he needed to fix for him as a man, as a human, not as a caricature, not as somebody that checked a box. That sort of nonsense wouldn't have fixed what was needed by Desmond Powell. But Desmond Powell fixed it himself like a real man. Those were the good old days of real entertainment. The Flash, Deadly Nightshade. Watch it. Love it. Let me know what you think.